Hey everyone, it's Laura from the blog OurEarlyHouse.com and today I want to give you six tips for a more natural kitchen. So if you're new here, I often do a lot of like cook with me videos and show you the different meals that we make from scratch in our kitchen. And I'm a lot of times getting questions of people asking me how I got started cooking this way, if this is the way that my mom always cooked when I was growing up, or just like different questions about my kitchen and the different things that I have in my kitchen. So I thought I would just do a little video kind of talking about these things and the types of things that I have in my kitchen that help it to just be a more natural kitchen and be set up to make these healthy meals that I'm often making. So first off, yes, I did grow up, my mom did cook a lot of recipes. She always was trying new recipes and cooking a lot of things from scratch. She made lots of casserole dishes. Still to this day, my mom is constantly cooking every Sunday. She has out me and my sisters, our whole families and our kids, and we all have a big Sunday dinner together. And typically she makes something with like meat, like a roast or burgers or steak or some type of meat with lots of different vegetables, salad, and just like kind of cooks very similar to the way that I cook. But we did not always eat that way growing up. We also were in um, school and lots of sports. And so there was a lot of running around and we were going back and forth from like in between practices and things. We would run through a drive through a lot and we would eat just convenient foods a lot of times as well. I think my love for cooking just started once I got married, started having kids and I was home all day with my kids and I just started making different recipes. We went through a stage of life where we did the GAPS diet because I had a child with a food allergy and we were trying to reverse that, which we were able to do that with the GAPS diet. And with that, there was just a lot of research that I did that led me to just learn a lot of things about different foods and how I wanted to cook for my family. Okay, so let's go into the six tips that I have about making your kitchen more natural. My first tip is to look at your cookware. So a lot of times we could spend all of this time making this really healthy, delicious meal with all of these organic from scratch ingredients to make this meal. But if you're cooking them in the wrong cookware, you can be getting different toxins and chemicals into your food just from the cookware that you're using. So in our house, we try to stick to mostly cast iron. Um, with my cast irons, I like to season those with organic coconut oil or with avocado oil. I like using those because those are GMO free oils that have a high smoke point. So that makes my cast irons very healthy and have a good oil that is in them that season them to make them um, nonstick. If you buy a cast iron skillet new from the store and it's already seasoned, you might want to re-season it with your own oil to make sure that you have an oil that is healthy for you because sometimes they're using oils that are not healthy to season those skillets. Um, also, another great option is just stainless steel. There isn't anything on there that's going to get into your food if you're using a traditional nonstick pan. They have different chemicals on there to make the pan nonstick, and those are ones that you're gonna wanna stay away from. So having cast iron or um, stainless steel are gonna be a better option. Now, also with cookware, think about the different appliances that you have. So if you have an air fryer, if you have a crock pot, if you have an Instapot, think about the liners that are in those that you're using um, and make sure that those are made with either stainless steel or something that is a healthier option than that traditional non-stick material that's going to seep the ingredients and toxins in those into your food. So for us, I like to use my Instapot over my Crock-Pot because my Crock-Pot does have an insert that is lined with stuff, whereas my Instapot is a stainless steel insert, so I feel better about using that over the crock pot. I also like to use my Dutch oven, which is cast iron. Um, when I'm making things that I would originally do in a crock pot, I can do it in my Dutch oven, and then I don't have to worry about those chemicals in that cookware. So the 
first thing you definitely want to do is kind of get into your kitchen, look through your cookware, and make sure that the cookware that you're using is healthy so you're not contaminating the healthy food that you're making. Now to go off of that one, the second tip I have is to look into your storage containers. Similar to your cookware, when you're storing your food, you want to make sure that you're storing your food in containers that are not plastic, or if you have a plastic container, that it doesn't contain BPA, um, and make sure that you're not, again, contaminating your food from the things that you're storing in it. Now, best case scenario would be to use glass. Um, glass is a healthier option. Option. If you have some silicone type things, that is better too, like storage containers, lids, that's a good option. Um, stainless steel is a good option. If you are doing freezer meals, like I've done in the past, and you're putting that in Ziploc bags, I'll say that's the best way to store them because you want them to lay flat. Make sure that your food is cooled before you pour them into the Ziploc bag. Um, putting hot food straight into plastic is going to make it more likely to pull the toxins out of the plastic and get it into your food. If you use a microwave, which I would definitely suggest staying away from that, we don't use a microwave at our house. Instead, I just use use um, pots and pans and just pour something in there to warm it up on the stove or I can put it in my cast iron and warm it up in the oven. But if you are using that, make sure that you're using glass and not using microwave. It's very bad to microwave plastic because again, that can get into your food. So go through your cookware, go through the things that you're storing your food in and make sure that when you're spending this extra time to make this healthy food, that you're not going to be making it unhealthy by what you're cooking it in or storing it in. The third thing we're going to look at when we're talking about having a more natural kitchen are the soaps that you're using and the cleaners you're using to clean your dishes and also to clean your countertops, maybe to clean your fruits. A lot of cleaners like Clorox and um, all-purpose sprays, dishwashing detergents, um, dish soap contain a lot of chemicals and toxins that we do not want to breathe in, that we don't want to put on our cookware. We definitely don't want to spray on our countertops. It is actually very easy to replace these with some homemade cleaners. I have a ton of recipes on my blog, but just to give you one simple recipe that will work for almost all of your cleaning is a simple all-purpose spray. You can get a spray bottle, like a 16 ounce glass spray bottle, put in eight ounces of vinegar, eight ounces of water, put in about 15, 20 drops of lemon essential oil, secure the lid, or the spray nozzle, shake it up. That makes a really great all-purpose spray. Now, if you have granite or natural stone countertops, you're not gonna wanna use vinegar on that. So I do have a different option for that using alcohol and a couple other things on my blog. So I'll link that down below. But if you can make just a very simple lemon and vinegar spray, that can replace a lot of your cleaners that are in your kitchen. You also can use Castell soap water, lemon essential oil, lavender essential oil to make a very easy dish soap um, that wash your dishes, cleanse them, purify them, but also not using any harsh chemicals. So that's definitely the next thing that I want you guys to look into when you're talking about having a natural kitchen is the look at the things that you're using to clean all around in your kitchen, either the countertops, dishes, washing your hands, different things like that. So I like under my sink, I have under there some vinegar, I have some Castell soap, I have a few homemade um, spray bottles with different cleaners in there. And that cabinet under there is one of my baby's favorite places to play is in there. So. Anytime I'm in, the, I'm in the kitchen cooking, he'll be under there pulling things out and it's totally fine because everything in there is non-toxic and it's totally okay for him to get in there and play with all that stuff. I don't have to worry about him getting into bleach or glass cleaners or any type of things that's going to burn his skin or his eyes. And the other great thing is when you have natural soaps and cleaners, your little ones can help you to clean. So I can give my four-year-old the glass spray bottle of vinegar and water and say, go spray off the table and the chairs and the high chair and wipe everything down. And he can over spray all he wants. It's totally fine because all the ingredients in there are completely safe for him to breathe in and get onto his skin. 
All right, the next few things I'm gonna talk about is getting into food. Now, obviously, we know if you wanna have a healthy, natural kitchen, you're gonna to wanna to stay away from processed food and have more vegetables and fruits in the home. But for this video, I'm gonna talk about a few of these things that kind of are lurking around in your pantry and your refrigerator that you might not think about. Because I feel like those other ones are kind of obvious and things that people already know. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about are your sauces, your condiments, and your dressings. These three different items are the items that are gonna have some of the most unhealthy ingredients in them inside of your refrigerator or your pantry. And so you might go and make a really healthy salad with some like mixed greens and cut up some onions and peppers to put on there, have avocado slices, um, organic pasture raised meat like chicken on there, and you have this perfectly healthy salad. But then if you drizzle it in pretty much any dressing that you buy from the store, unless you are are buying a dressing that's I don't know there there are some like Tessa May has some whole 30 approved dressings that are made with good ingredients but like 99% of the dressings that you find in the, from the store even like your Italians and your oils and vinegars are gonna be made with ingredients that are definitely not good for you to consume you have to watch for the type of oil that they're using almost all salad dressings have soybean oil in there and if you are at all familiar with the health food world you know that soybean oil is out because one, it is GMO'd, um, and so there is very bad ingredients in there. And we don't even really know all the effects that GMO products have on us because they're still relatively new, but you want to stay away from those genetically modified foods. And so soybean oil is gonna be found in there. The other ingredient that you're gonna find in the most all sauces, condiments, and dressings on the grocery store shelves is sugar. It is hidden in almost everything. It is mind blowing when you start actually reading labels. So once, like I said, when we did the gap stay at that time and I was reading the back of labels, I couldn't believe that sugar was in almost every single one of those sauces and condiments. I mean, your ketchups, your dressings, your soups, like your beans. If you get canned beans from the grocery store, there's going to be sugar in them. Not really sure why, but they are. So. Um, that's gonna be something that you're gonna want to ditch and make yourself, I mean, like I said, there are healthy ingredient um, dressings out there. They're gonna be really expensive and they're gonna be harder to find. And if you go to like a health food store, you can find them, but they're gonna cost, I mean, we bought them before whenever we're trying to be like convenient foods or for on vacation. And just like a little bottle that my family can use in one sitting is like five bucks compared to like a regular ranch dressing that's like a dollar or two dollars or something. So it's going to be a lot more expensive, but making your own is actually very, very simple. You can make a homemade mayonnaise with good, healthy fat avocado oil, um, fresh organic eggs, um, some salt and pepper, a little bit of mustard, and you can make it in like two minutes. And you can use that mayonnaise, obviously, for anything that you would use mayonnaise in, but also to make some really yummy, creamy homemade dressings. You can make a homemade ranch with some freshly made yogurt. You can make that on your own. Very simple. Again, I mean, this stuff is actually so much easier than it seems. It's going to save you so much money. Um, and some Italian seasonings. You can make a homemade mustard. I have recipes for these on my blog. You can make a homemade barbecue sauce, ketchup. But as you get going and you start looking at labels, you're going to realize that probably most of the condiments, unfortunately, in your refrigerator are going to have ingredients in there that you really are going to want to stay away from. So it's definitely the next step on having a natural kitchen and when you're ready to start cooking from scratch meals you're going to want to also start cooking from scratch sauces and condiments and dressings because unfortunately those are the things that have those really bad ingredients in there and they're going to mess up all your hard work if you make this really delicious meal and then you top it with a dressing or a sauce or ketchup or barbecue sauce or something and then it's going to ruin it because of the bad ingredients that are found in those products all right, the next thing that kind of goes off of that is to watch the types of oils that you have in your home. If you are a person that likes to bake, you can still bake and make 
healthy cakes and cupcakes. You really can. You can use some natural sweeteners like honey or coconut sugar. But the biggest thing again with baking and a lot of your cooking is the oils that you're using. So definitely think about the different oils that you're using. Um, like I said before, avocado oil and coconut oil are some of my favorites. Other, obviously you can just use fats like tallow, lard, butter, like real butter, not fake butter, but having those good healthy fats are great for you. It's great for brain development. Um, there's a lot of benefits to having those rather than cooking with vegetable oils or soybean oils or even a lot of olive oils. Some olive oils are healthy. Again, you're gonna have to look into that. A lot of them aren't, unfortunately. But even cooking with olive oil, it hasn't had, it does not have a very high smoke point. And so when you cook with that, it can become unhealthy. If you're using the olive oil for like a salad dressing, if you have a good, pure, real olive oil, then that's okay. But when you're cooking or baking, you're gonna want to stick to oils like avocado oil and coconut oil. All right, and number six on my list, I just have on my, I keep looking down at my phone because I have my list here on my phone. I just wrote down organic. So obviously when you're using organic ingredients, that's gonna be better for you because those are gonna be things that are not sprayed with any type of chemicals when they're being grown. They're not gonna be grown with any GMOs and it's gonna be a little bit better for you. Now, the thing with organic and something that I get a lot of is that it's more expensive to buy organic. So it makes it a little bit harder when you're trying to live a healthier life, but you don't wanna to have to spend more money. One thing you can consider is the clean 15 and the dirty dozen list. So there is a list of um, vegetables and fruits and anything on the clean 15, like bananas, avocados, oranges, things with a real thick shell or peel, and also the way that they're grown are okay to consume non-organic. And then there's things like strawberries and apples, and celery, these fruits and vegetables are sprayed heavily with different pesticides and chemicals to make them grow to be into this like beautiful yummy fruit to keep the bugs off and the animals away from them and so those are ones that definitely need to be organic so if you have a budget that does not allow you to buy organic foods stick to the things that are on the clean 15 and avoid the things that are on the dirty dozen now obviously if you want something that's on the dirty dozen then i would suggest buying it in organic but if you can't afford that or you don't want to have to buy organic foods, or maybe organic foods aren't very easy to find where you live, then stick to things that are on the Clean 15. You can just Google Clean 15 Dirty Dozen and a list will pop right up. You'll see what I'm saying. When I first started looking at that list before I had it memorized just in my head, I printed it off, folded it up, had it in my wallet, and anytime I was at the grocery store, I would look at that list and that's how I knew which produce items I needed to buy organically and which ones were okay to buy non-organically. Now, if you live in an area that allows you to have a garden, you can also consider growing the things that are on the Dirty Dozen. So you can grow them and you can grow them yourself organically and then you don't have to worry about buying that produce at a higher price because you won't have to worry about buying it organically. All right, I hope these tips were helpful. These were definitely some of the things that I did to my kitchen so that when I go in there and I'm ready to cook, most of the ingredients in there are already healthy so I can grab those healthier oils to make those healthier baking dishes that I'm making or just any type of meal for my family. Um, it's nice to have that cookware that you can use. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, let me know down in the comments below. I'm considering kind of doing a few more of these videos videos with like different swaps you can make in the bathroom, different swaps you can make in the living room, or just different areas of your home to make a more natural, non-toxic home. If you're new here, be sure to check out my link down in my description box below. I have a free masterclass where I talk a lot about living a healthier lifestyle and some different swaps that you can make. And so I'll link that below and you can grab a seat to register. And if you're new, please hit that subscribe button. I get out a new video every single week. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video.